Hello, I'm Father Timothy Matkin. I'm standing here in the library of the seminary where I studied for the priesthood. I've come back to do some research on a book that I'd like to write about culture and how culture shapes and sometimes distorts our understanding of what the Bible means. Now, any good theological library will have a multi-volume work in it called the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, edited by Gerhard Cattell. In fact, this library has the original German version. There you can see his name. Now, who was Gerhard Cattell? Well, he was a New Testament scholar in the 20th century. In fact, his father was an Old Testament scholar, so he got interested in the subject very early on and rose to prominence in his field. His major work was that theological dictionary of the New Testament. He was dedicated to the study of lexography, the study of words and their meaning and their origins and how they're used. And he saw that as almost a sacred endeavor, as a way of kind of unlocking the meaning of the New Testament. He opposed the history of religions school, which was a movement among scholars to try to explain Christianity as the result of uh, an evolution of ideas and culture and things like that. So he was a conservative scholar in that regard. He defended the Old Testament against many critical German scholars of his age who wanted to kind of get rid of it, like Marcion. He devoted himself to the study of the Jewish roots of the New Testament. He argued that it wasn't primary, primarily a Hellenistic evolutionary idea, but that it was part of the revealed word of God and the fulfillment of true Judaism. He completed the early volumes of his work, the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, but he wasn't able to finish because in 1945, he was arrested by French occupying forces in Germany and charged with crimes against humanity. That's right, Gerhard Kittel was a Nazi. And it seems like a strange story. He joined the Nazi movement very early on in 1933 when Hitler first rose to power. In fact, that year he gave an address to his fraternity on this topic of die Judenfrage, the Jewish question. How to handle Jews in society? What are we to do with them? His argument was that they should be removed from the fabric of Jewish society, not killed off, but not be allowed to serve in certain professions and things like that. And his ideas were basically put into practice with the Jewish Nuremberg laws uh, they were enacted against Jew, uh, Jews in society. Strangely, he was considered a moderate among his peers by opposing Nazi extremes, the more extreme extremes, and by opposing the German Christian movement or positive Christianity with its kind of Aryan version of Jesus. He urged Christians to act as good Samaritans toward Jews. In fact, he led by example. He helped several Jewish friends escape from the Nazis. And strangely, he saw this forced disassimilation of Jews in society as kind of helping them in a strange way, sort of shocking them into realizing that their Judaism was distorted, that they needed to return to true Judaism fulfilled in Jesus. So he thought this would be an, a way of helping them convert and thereby saving them, not just in a spiritual way, but in a physical way as well. Of course, given his own background and history, his theological dictionary was under great suspicion. And so it's been carefully studied, mostly by a man named J.S. Voss, who looked at it thoroughly and concluded that explicit statements of a kind of racist anti-Semitism or even a one-sided negativity toward Jews was largely absent from the theological dictionary, even from the articles that Cattell himself wrote. In fact, the most critical article in the whole theological dictionary, Cattell had his theological and political opponent, Rudolf Bultmann, write the article on the word faith. So when you see the theological dictionary of the New Testament in a library, Keep in mind how easy it is to be influenced by the culture around you. I'm Father Timothy Matkin.